minus 6 pi. Okay, the first thing to realize is that 4 pi is 4 times 3.14. It's a number, right? Uh, if I were to write it out, I would multiply it out, get 12.56, right? Uh, but I don't have to do that. I don't have to multiply 4 by 3.14, okay? Um, you know, if I were like a, a scientist, if I were, I just watched uh, The Martian. Have you guys heard of that movie, The Martian? Yeah. You seen it? Mm -hmm. oh, I want to see it though. Super good. It's worth watching. Uh, about a, a guy, like a manned mission to Mars, and, and uh, they have to leave because of a storm, and they think one of their their uh, crew is dead, so they leave him behind, and the whole thing is about uh, him trying to survive on Mars. It's pretty cool. Uh, but it, he would want to keep these numbers as exact as possible until he needed to, like, at the very end, round to two decimal places. Okay, at some point, you're gonna have to round because we have to be practical. We have to, we can't take these things out to an infinite number of decimal places all the time. But until then, we should leave it as four times pi because that's as exact as it can be. Does that make sense? Yeah. If we multiply four by 3.14, we're rounding off before we even like figure out what x is and you know are able to use it or whatever that might be used for if it's supposed to be the you know, number of feet that we're supposed to measure off or whatever. We want this to be as exact as, exact as possible. But realizing that it is 4 times 3.14 reminds us it's just a number, okay? It acts just like any other number. I can subtract this number, I can add this number, I can add to this number, I can subtract from this number. It's just a number, okay? And pi is not a variable, it's not a unknown, okay? So we would solve this equation just about the same as we would solve this equation. Like if we left the pi's out, which we can't, but if, if we did, we would solve it pretty much the same way. What about this equation? How would you solve this equation? Add 6, right, because negative 6 plus 6 is what? Zero. So now we have w plus 0. That's great because now that's just w, really. Okay? We have to do it to both sides. Why do we have to do it to both sides? To keep it balanced. Keep it balanced. Don't want it to get off balance. Keep it balanced. Okay? So now w equals 10. Okay, good job. But now, that wasn't our equation. This is our equation. We have w minus 6 pi. How are we going to get w by itself on one side? You're going to add 6 pi. Right, 6 pi. Mm -hmm. And you might think, well, that's 6 times 3.14. And yes, you could multiply 6 by 3.14 and find the decimal approximation of what that is. What would you do? You would just add whatever that number is with its decimal places. Okay. You would add whatever 6 times pi turns out to be. You would add it to both sides. Okay. So now we have w plus 0. Okay. We kind of fall off writing that plus zero step or that one times w step. It's just w now. And what is four pi plus six pi? 10, Ten pi. 10 pi. Okay, let me just remind you real quick why that is, if that might confuse you at all. Four times pi, multiplication of times four is just repeated addition, right? So this is just pi plus pi plus pi plus pi. What is this equal to? No, I'm, uh, yes, but if I add them all up. 12.56. Right, what I'm saying is, I, yes, okay. Oh. I, I know sometimes my questions are not very clear, but to make them more clear is almost to give them away. So thanks for your patience. If you add up four pies, that's the same as four times pi, right? And then what do I do? I add on, what do I add on? Six, Six more pies. Let's pretend I wrote six more pi's. How many pi's is that? Ten. Ten, right? Pi plus pi plus pi plus pi plus pi. This is the, a pretty crucial thing. We are adding six more pi's. Right? If we were multiplying, it would be a different story. But we're adding six more pi's for a total of ten times pi. There we are. W equals ten pi. So what if you solve ten pi equation? And you got the 31.4. I would accept it, but I would say plan to go into any mathematics or science field, you should really just leave it, because what's the harm? It can only be better this way. Because if I pass this information off to some other guy, or, or girl,
and they need to use this number, it might as well be as exact as it possibly can be. They can do 10 times pi and round it out to as many decimal places as they want. It can be as precise as they need it to be. Okay, uh, so that was 12. What's another one that we should go over? Sean, you had one, right? Uh, seven. Seven. On two. On 1.2? Uh, or is it 1.1? 1.2. 1 1.2? 1 yeah. Oh. Wait. Okay, yeah, it's on 1.2. One, one of the ones. So let's uh, let's stick to 1.1. 1 .1. Questions from 1.1, 1 .1, then we'll go to 1.2. Questions from 1.1. 1 .1. Steve's got the course too late. Yes? Number 14. Number 14 from 1.1. 3 eighths equals R plus thirds. Okay. I want to know what r is worth. Right now I know what r plus two-thirds more is worth. How do I manipulate this equation so that r is the only thing on this side of the equation? Can I get it so r is the only thing there on the right side of the equation? Charlie? You just subtract two-thirds from the side. Subtract two-thirds. Good. That has to happen. If I don't subtract two thirds, then there will be two thirds there, and I'll never know what r is. Right. So subtracting two thirds has to happen. Now, actually doing that requires a little more thought, because now we have three eighths minus two thirds. Is that one over five? Three minus two is one, and eight minus three is five. No, no. it's not. I cannot take two thirds away from three eighths because thirds and eighths are different sizes, right? talked about that before. Eighths are smaller than thirds. I can't take a big old third from an eighth. I don't really know what that would look like. Okay, it's like taking an apple away from an orange. How could you do it? You can't do it. They have to be comparable. Right, so we have to make them the same size. That means find a common denominator. finding a common denominator. Okay. The denominator tells us how big the pieces are. Do you remember all this discussion about how big pieces are, how many pieces we have? Right? So the pieces are small. These pieces are small compared to these. So when you find a common denominator, denominator tells us how small the pieces are. When we find a common denominator, we make them the same size. So what's going to be our common denominator? 24. 24. I wish it were smaller than 8 times 3, but there's just no way. right? So we'll multiply this by 3, which means you have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. right? What's 3 over 3 equal to? 1. We're just multiplying this by 1. It's not changing anything, changing how big the number is, just how it looks. We'll multiply this by 8 over 8. Right? So now r is equal to 9 eight, or sorry, 9 24ths minus 16 24ths. Right? Equals negative 7 24ths. Okay. Further questions from 1.1? case, number 14 and, and the ones that we've done so far today, we wanted to get r plus nothing else, r plus zero. Right? We're going to have nothing added on to r. Here we're multiplying k by some number. We're not adding anything, we're not subtracting anything, we're multiplying it. Okay. Well, if I want to know what k is, then what would I like to have, what number would I like to have multiplied by k right here? If I want to just have it to be the same as k, One. one times k. I would like to see one times k, and then whatever's over here, that just must be the same as k, because one times k is k. So is there something I could do to this side of the equation that will wind up being equivalent to one times k? Can you assign size Josie and Sean? Heard from them already. Charlie's already done a lot of the work for us today. Anybody new? Uh, give you a hint. What could I multiply 9 tenths k by to get 1k? 
multiply 9 tenths by something to get 1k. Jacob, so yeah, like a 3 quarters hand raised. Uh, how could you multiply this by so that you would wind up getting 1 times k? 10 over 9. Yes, 10 over 9. Very good. Right, because 10, we get to do it a couple different ways. 10 times 9 is 90. 9 times 10 is 90. What's 90 over 90? 1. 1. Great. So we have 1k on this side. Okay, but I just multiplied this side by 10 ninths. So I didn't multiply this side by 10 ninths. So we could do a 30 over 18. Those both have a factor of 3 in common, right? Actually, a factor of uh, 6. They have a factor of 6 in common. This divided by 6 is 5. Divide this by 6, you get 3. 5 thirds. We could have also said this is a factor of 2 and so does this, 5, 1. This is a factor of 3 and so does this, 3, 1, and you get 5 over 3. All right, let's go to 1.2. Sean? 7. 7. 1.2. Seven. Now we have two of these, this is what we call a two-step equation, uh, where we have something multiplied by the variable and we've added something on or subtracted something. We're going to cancel both of those things out, so we wind up with just a 1 times c plus nothing. So, suggestions. Mm -hmm. Josie? Um, you would subtract 19. Okay, let's see. Does that work? We got this. We got this number here, right? Plus 19. That's the same thing. I could write it the other way. Then I get 4c, whatever that thing is, plus 19. So I could just subtract the 19. Correct. Okay. 19 minus 19 is zero. So I'll subtract 19 from the other side. Get negative 4c equals negative 2. All right. That's mathematically logical. Sound. Yes. Divide by four c, or divide by four and get four on each side. So divide by negative four. So we have negative four divided by negative four is one. It's a positive one, right? Negative divided by negative is positive. Four divided by four is one. And on the other side, we have negative two divided by negative four. That's going to be positive. Where we don't want to multiply, right? We got one half or 0.5 half because it shows I'm not scared of fractions. Okay, next question. Number seven. John? Nine. Right place to start here. We just start with something true. Grady? Uh, minus 11 on both sides. And then 11 is just hanging out there. It's not attached to anything, right? It's not inside parentheses. There's no harm in just subtracting 11 from 11 and getting 0. So we have 2 thirds h minus 1 third h equals negative 3. Here you have 2 thirds h minus 1 third h, Cadence. Can't you just? And what would that leave us with? 1 third h. Yeah. It's the same as 2h uh, minus 1h is 1h. Or 5h minus 2h is 3h. 2 thirds of an h minus 1 third of an h is 1 third of an h. Equals negative 3. And we're going to get that h to be a 1 times h. Charlie? Um, you're going to multiply 1 third by 2 over 1. Three over one, right? Multiply a number by its reciprocal, and you get one every time. Multiply this by three. H one H equals negative three times three, negative nine. Great. Number ten. Number ten.
again, no right place to start here. You can see uh, at least two starting places that would be perfectly fine to start with. So what makes sense to you is as long as it works out and it's correct, you should do it. something into parentheses. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times negative 8 is? Negative 48. Negative 48 V. Don't forget the V. Okay, now what? Josie? Um, you subtract 30. Subtract 30, subtract 30. Now we're to negative 48 V equals negative 96. Alex? Um, you divide 48 by, on each side. Divide by 48? Yeah. Okay. What's negative 48 divided by 48? One. Negative one. It's negative one. What's that? Negative one, I said. Okay, it is negative one. So we got negative V, negative one times V equals, what's negative 96 divided by 48? Negative 2. So negative V equals negative 2. So V must be, must be 2 divided by a negative 1 or multiply by a negative 1 here. We get v equals 2. Could we have done that a little bit differently, Cadence? Couldn't you have just added the, well, divided by a negative 2 and then added negative 48? You certainly could have done that. Because what's negative 48 divided by negative 48? Is positive. Positive one, so we would have just gone right here and skipped this step. Okay. Is this wrong? Of course it's not. But if you do something, make sure that you are thinking about the actual math that needs to happen. If you divide negative 48 by 48, well, just assume that it's positive one. Slow down, slow and smooth, think about it for a second. Okay. And if negative 48 divided by 48 is negative one, that is what you're going to put on the next step. If you decide in your head, oh, I don't want negative one, I want positive one, and you throw a negative in there, and you, you know, speed that process along, then great. If you don't, then you're going to take an extra step. Right? But don't go too fast and make mistakes. Okay. Well then, let's pass in our own work. Here we go. So, negative six plus x equals eight. We want just x, not x with this negative six added on. So, Alex, what do we do? Um, you take plus six on each side. Good, so negative six plus six is zero, so we add x plus nothing else, and we add six and we get x is 14. All right, let's see if this works. All right, number two. Now we have a four sevenths times x. We don't like four sevenths times x. What do we like to have multiplied by x? Charlie? Multiply 7 fourths on each side. Okay, we want to multiply by 7 fourths because four, 7 fourths times 4 sevenths is what? One. 1. And 1x is nice. Why is 1x nice? Because it just it leaves x. Because 1x, one, 1 times x is the same as x. And don't we want to know what x is? Yes, of course we do. So we're going to multiply by 7 fourths. So we'll multiply 16 over 1 by 7 over 4. And I'm going to go ahead and do this cross canceling. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. Or whatever 16 times 7 is over 4 divided by 4, you get 28. Or if you left it as that fraction, let's not do that in the future, but that's fine for today. If you multiply by 7 fourths, that's the key. That's the thing that we want to have learned and show that we understand. Uh, I need a fun color here. 
Okay, 4x minus 7. We don't want 4x minus 7. We'd like 1x plus nothing. I'll take plus, you do plus 7 on each side. Plus 7, like that. Your x equals 3. John? Uh, divide by 4 on both sides. So divide by 4, we get 1x. Divide 3 by 4, we get 3 fourths. Yeah. 4.75. Okay, looks like a doozy, but remember, if, if something looks intimidating, you just take it one step at a time. Do something that you know is correct, then do the next thing that you know is correct, and you keep on going. Johnny? Uh, you minus subtract five from five and from three. Great, negative three <coughs> times two x minus four is left on this side, and here we have negative 36. Josie? You distribute the negative three to two x, Good, negative 6x plus, plus 12, very good. Negative times negative is positive. Equals negative 36. Yeah. Um, minus 12 on both sides. Minus 12 on both sides, showing my work. Negative 6x equals negative 48. Almost home. Jacob. Divide by negative 6. Divide by negative 6, x equals All right, how's all that? Thumbs up, thumbs down, sideways? That's pretty good. Good. All right. Um, today's homework is also from 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper into the hole here. Okay. Um, we don't want that. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples and really have confidence that you can just take it to the next step, okay? But let's look at an example. 3x plus 4x minus 5 equals 23. I actually had one, I think, even more challenging than this uh, in the homework today that we had to do. Okay. Suggestions for something we can do first.
So we know that if we have a number of hours, we multiply the hours by the rate, and we have the number of dollars. Okay. Let's say on Monday, you worked for four hours. On Tuesday, you worked for three hours. On Wednesday, you've forgotten how much you worked. Not only did you get paid your $9 an hour, you also, let's say you're a bagger at a grocery store, and you got $15 in tips over those three days. Okay. And at the end of those three days, your, your total amount that you made was $100.50. You write an equation that we can solve for the number of hours you work on Wednesday. Yeah. Sean? Uh, nine times seven. Nine times seven. Which would be the amount of hours. How much money you made on those two yeah. days? because you made $15. Yeah, and then your, your next day would be, would be like um, 9 times x. Okay, so 9 times x, that's just kind of floating around in our heads. It sounds like, where did it go in this oh. problem? Monica? 9 times 7x. 9 times 7x, I think that's pretty close, but see, that's implying that I would take the number of hours on this day and multiply by the number of hours on this day. Can I multiply them? But I would combine them, wouldn't I? In what way would I combine these hours? Add them. So I would multiply it by my total hour, 7 plus x, right? And that comes out to be? $100.50. Is this familiar? We've solved equations like that before, right? We, just, we wrote it this time. The distributed property involved. Okay. So, I'll give that to you. Okay. And one more. Okay. Close. Let's say you scored 85 on a test, and then on the next test you scored a 79, then a 98. And you're about to take the next test. In the end, you want to average a 90. An average 90. So, how would we calculate? how well we're supposed to do on that test. How do you average things? Josie? Um, don't you add them all together and divide by the number of numbers? So, that 85, that was our bell, plus 79, plus 98, plus, X. divided by? Three. Four. 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 Four tests at the end, right? Equals 90 and solve for X. Right there on the board? 10, 6. 10, 7. Oh. Did you do 1, 7? Thank you.